Hey, this is Andreas from eSurfer, from our location here in Berlin. Uh, we are doing our eFoil courses right here next uh, to the shop. And today I would like to explain you what is an eFoil, an electric hydrofoil surfboard, also called eFoil. The eFoil is powered by an electric motor, which gets its energy from a lithium ion battery, which you can find in the battery compartment where it's connected with uh, two or three cables. The charging time is usually about one and a half hours and this is also the riding time, one and a half to two hours, if you have the right battery. Uh, over the last years, it was established that uh, batteries with about 13 to 14 kilogram uh, with a power of 2.1 to 2.3 kWh uh, kilowatt hours uh, have the right size in terms of weight uh, compared to range. There are smaller and cheaper batteries out. Sometimes they are even called standard and the, what I call a normal one uh, are called premium. However, if you are not somebody who is actually riding in waves, I would stay with the larger batteries. The smaller batteries are not designed to save money. They are designed to make your board lighter. If you are riding in waves and you want to turn off the motor and ride the wave, it's important that the board is as light as possible. You also don't need so much power because the wave is giving you the energy. Then it makes sense to go for a smaller battery. For all others, I would uh, say stay with uh, the normal or premium batteries. An e-foil is a flying surfboard. Yes, you are flying above water. Why is this? Because you have a mast underneath the board with a motor and underwater wings. And these wings are responsible to lift you up. So you are basically riding 60 to 70 centimeter above, above the water surface. Uh, you accelerate with the remote control or hand controller. And this remote is responsible for the speed. So you are setting the right speed for the right maneuver you are trying to do. It is not responsible for going up and down. Uh, you control the height with weight shifting. So if you go to the back, it will lift up. If you go to the front, it will lift down. We have actually made an uh, eFall online course video here on this YouTube channel if you are interested to learn more how to eFall. Let's have a short look at the boards themselves. Most manufacturers have different board sizes. These two from Audi and from Flightboard are around 100 liter and this is kind of the standard size an all-rounder board which beginners can ride but advanced riders still have fun. And then there are smaller boards like the Flightboard Pro or the Pro Performance version from Audi. A smaller board is a little bit more difficult to ride but it's more agile. Important to know however is that if you are starting on the surface, it's to 80% the board to 20% the wing. Once you start lifting up and you are flying above the water, it's 80% the wing and 20% the board. So a smaller board still has a less of a swing rate, so it's a little bit more agile, but the majority is driven by the wing. That said, since the start is more difficult with the smaller board, you actually have to invest more to get up on the smaller board and uh, you don't get everything back you are investing. So if you are not sure, I would stay with the standard size and if you are friends and family you want to try it, everybody will be able to ride these boards. Advanced riders still have a lot of fun. I still use uh, the larger boards because they are just standing here around and I just don't get a different board just to have a shorter one. Um, however, if you are only buying a board for yourself, it makes sense to go for the smallest size you can handle. Because you have a smaller board, it's easier to handle, it's more agile, but it will be a little bit more difficult to launch a board. Let's talk about propulsions. We have uh, propeller solutions and we have jet powered solutions. The jets are pretty new, they just came out 2022. Uh, the propellers are around since 2018. Uh, the reason is it's actually much more complicated to have a powerful jet. Uh, but 
some smart guys made it happen and now you see more and more manufacturers doing it. Here are the two examples from Audi and Flight. Um, and I personally like it a lot. It's certainly safer. Uh, accident with uh, propellers uh, do not happen very often. It's really seldom. However, if it happens, it's not a nice thing, right? Uh, the jet, there's almost no way you can get in with your fingers or tools or anything else, so they are certainly safer. Uh, however, it's a different riding, and jet foil is smoother. So you can imagine if you have a propeller, if you push the trigger, there's instant torque. Uh, if you go from the trigger a little bit, it actually stops instantly because uh, you have the big propeller which is actually in the water. So with the jet, it's much slimmer, so it's smoother. To a certain degree, easier to ride, but certainly smoother. However, there's still a good reason uh, why there are propeller-powered solutions. If you are a very good, sporty and aggressive rider, you may want the torque. Yeah? You are, if you are going in aggressive curves, you need the power to really do something very sporty. And this is where these propeller solutions may still have an advantage. But even with the propellers, there are different uh, uh, solutions. You have a lift foils here with a very nice aluminium propeller. It's certainly a very good propeller. But aluminium is really tough, right? Uh, while the plastic propeller, if something gets inside, actually it will just go away. So if a propeller, then uh, the plastic propeller would be safer in case you have an accident. Uh, there are also different kind of uh, propeller solutions. You have a folding propeller for people who want to ride into waves. Uh, you have a true glide propeller also for riding waves. Uh, advanced riders take off of the prop guard to have more power. Uh, certainly, there's probably potentially more risk. This is something everybody has to decide. That's why if you purchase them in, in the standard configuration, they have always the guard. So, if you should take a jet or a propeller, really depends on your riding style. If you want maximum power, want to have very aggressive maneuvers, go for the propeller. If you want to do easy peasy, smooth cruising over the water, uh, I'm not saying that it's boring, they are pretty fast and of course you can make tight turns, but it's more the easy cruising than the jet is the solution for you. Let's talk about the masts. You have different lengths and different materials. Um, you have carbon fiber like lift foils and the Audi e-tron foil, and you have aluminium. Flight is using aluminium because they are using the mast to cool the electronics. I think it's a little bit sharp and it's a little bit more stiff. Uh, the, the carbon fiber mast have a little bit more flex, in my opinion, but everybody has a different riding style and the aluminium mast is still a good solution. In terms of lengths, Shorter masts, like 60 cm, are used for beginners so that they don't fall from too high. Uh, longer masts, and Audi and Flight currently have the longest with 80 cm. Um, also, the standard version from Flight is 75, but you can actually order 80 cm mast as well. It's better for sharp turnings um, because the wings are deeper in the water, but also for choppy water and waves, it's easier. Uh, to get above it. If you talk about mass lengths, it's also important where the motor sits. As you can see with lift foils, it's added here to the mast. So basically the effective mass length stops already here. Lift did this because they were originally producing uh, hydrofoils for surfing, kite surfing and so on. And they're using the same wings for all their boards, with or without motor, uh, because they just can turn them off. Other manufacturers are only producing uh, e-foils, so they have designed it for an e-foil, so they are using the entire length of the mast, and the main advantage is that actually the power goes directly to the wing. It's not sitting here, it's actually right in line uh, with the wing, which makes it much more stable to ride. 
Okay, let's talk about the hand controllers or remote controls. We have Flipvolts here, Flightboard and Audi. Uh, they have different sizes, some prefer bigger ones, some prefer smaller ones. Liftvolt is already out since 2018. Uh, it's a little bit basic, it has a, a black and white ink display, the functionality is yeah, basic as I said. Uh, what disturbs me a lot is that it doesn't have any safety functions, so once the remote is on it's always hot. Uh, other manufacturers have uh, safety functionality, uh, such like Flightboard. You know, it's always locked, it says the lock, uh, so you cannot by mistake push the trigger. You have to push the trigger, push minus, and now you, can, you are ready to go. It's very easy and it's safe so that you don't by mistake uh, turn on the motor. Uh, it has also a black and white display, uh, but a lot of functionality. You can see how fast you are, you can afterwards see what your maximum speed was, average uh, speed was, uh, how much energy you used, and so on and so on. Uh, last but not least, uh, the Audi uh, remote, uh, the largest display and the only one with color display from this three. Um, it has gears like the other two as well. Lyft has 15 different speed gears, uh, Flightboard has 20. Uh, they did it a little different. They have at first three modes, uh, which has a different uh, aggressiveness of the trigger. And then once you go in this, you still have 10 gears actually to limit the speed. Let, at the end of the day, the functionality is always the same. <laughs> you have a trigger and this is how you accelerate. Uh, and if you like smaller or larger ones, uh, I would say just go into a shop like eSurfer, try the different boards. We have them all here on display. You can all try them on the water and some people like uh, bigger remotes, some people like smaller remotes, uh, like the one from Flightboard. Oh, one more thing. Yes, they swim. <laughs> I get a lot of questions if they swim. Don't worry, all of them swim. Uh, but it's safer, like Flight and Audi have uh, this kind of leash, because if you are in a, in a lake like this, the color is very difficult to find, so it's extra safe to have it here. But if it falls into the water, don't worry, it will swim. Let's talk about wings. Your wings in different sizes, for example, Audi Aerofoils 1100, 900, they also have a 1350, which is the standard uh, wing, and a 1750, which we are using here in the school. Uh, same with Flightboard, they have different wings, different sizes, Lyft does the same, other manufacturers the same. And the difference between the sizes is similar like with the boards, you know, smaller wings are more agile, they are faster, um, but they are more difficult to ride. So the good thing is you don't need to get confused about all these wings because unless you know better, because you're an experienced e-foiler, it's always good to use the standard wing which comes with the board. So the manufacturers have a designed a standard wing which perfectly fits to a board and should work for everybody. If you want something else later on, for example, you want to go faster, there's a wing for it. Uh, you want to go further, there's a wing for it. You want to ride waves. Guess what? There's a wing for it. But at the beginning, don't worry, just take the standard wing and you will be good. Does the e-foil fit into your car or on your boat? The answer is yes. Once you have done it, you can assemble and disassemble uh, your e-foil in less than three minutes. You know, two screws here, stabilizer away. Three wings here, front wing away. Four wings there mask goes out. Then you put everything into your bag. This big, bigger bag fits everything from uh, wings to masks to chargers, uh, remotes, everything you need. Uh, the board goes into a board bag and then the battery goes into a separate bag. So whenever you have a car where you can turn down the rear seats, no problem, you will get it inside and you will have it assembled in, a, in seconds minutes, two, two or three minutes. Let's talk about the price. So you can get e starting from 5,000 euro and going up to 20,000 euro. But I can tell you, you get what you pay for. 
So I personally, I stick to premium brands. I have the Audis, the flight boards. I used to sell Lyft in the past and I'm quite happy with this. Um, we talked about different components, you know, do you have a carbon fiber board? It's more expensive than a cheaper fiberglass board. Do you have a fiberglass mast? Uh, sorry, a carbon fiber mast. Uh, it's uh, more expensive than an aluminum mast. Uh, the length, uh, the performance, uh, the size of the battery, all of this has influence. Um, if you buy a cheaper product, um, you know, it might be noisier, you know, a louder motor, it, it might be not as stable. Um, that's, you basically get what you pay for. But the main reason why I personally stick to the premium brands is, of course, if you are used to ride Porsche, then you don't want to go to a small Fiat. Uh, but there's even a, a, a more important reason, which is the support. So cheaper boards have to use cheaper components. Cheaper components means probably more support cases. At the same time, the manufacturer does not have the same margin or earn so much with the board than a premium manufacturer. And the premium manufacturer is investing this money into support. Because I don't want to come into a situation where my customer is on vacation, something doesn't work, I need to help him within 48 hours, because otherwise his vacation is gone. I cannot tell him, okay, it will take six weeks to get uh, a spare part. And this is what I learned from cheaper manufacturers that this can happen. It's, it's just by nature, you know, cheaper components, more cases, less money for support. And that's why I personally stick uh, to these brands. They're usually about 15, 16,000 euro. I know it's a lot of money, but it can happen that you spend five or six thousand and it will be broken and you don't get any support, then it's even more expensive. So if you enter this sport, I would suggest stick with premium brands. If you don't have the budget, maybe you can get a used one, then it's still a premium product where you get the spare parts. Uh, but you know, you have to be aware the budget is about 15 to 16k if you want to have a proper e -foil. Okay, this was my introductions into e-foils. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Uh, I'm sure I forgot something. Please use the comments here on YouTube. Uh, I will try my best to answer all your questions. Uh, otherwise, you can go to our website, esurfer.com. Uh, there's a phone number, there's emails and a lot of blog articles which give you more details about the boards. Uh, just call us or visit our shop and uh, we will help you. See you.